how would I approach, I love that word, how would I approach a malignant leader interfering with an agile team? Mm, some images cast up there. So really what we're talking about here is a leader who's problematic. I wouldn't necessarily call them malignant, definitely not to their face, but somebody who's getting in the way, somebody who's stopping your team forming or getting their job done. What do we do? Well, to be honest, we need to call them on it, not publicly, and we need to do it respectfully, but you need to be going out there and talking to this leader. So before you do that, sit down, check with others. Is this what you're seeing? Are we as a team seeing this or is that just you? Because maybe you're having a bad day. Um, our emotions do cloud our judgment at times. So it's always worthwhile sitting down and actually, and I would recommend write it down, type it out, whatever it is, but get it out of your head on the page and have a look. This is what's happening. Because what we're going to need to do when we talk to this malignant leader is give them concrete examples. Okay, Don't turn up and say you're rubbish at your job because they're going to point out that at least they had one and you no longer do, um, particularly if they're you know, embodying that whole malignancy. So what you want to do is just sit down. What have you seen? What have you experienced? What's the impacts of that? OK. And when you do go talk to them and you do need to, don't go there to cast blame. Please do not go there and say that they're a problem. Go there to understand. Step one is turn up and talk to them about what they think they're doing, what they think they're achieving. Okay? Because maybe you're just misunderstanding the job. Maybe they're not you know, untoward or toxic or anything else. Maybe they've got a completely different job to what you think they're doing. They're not there to facilitate the team, to enable it to be great. Maybe they're there for, I don't know, a myriad of other reasons that do not align with what we're looking for. Okay? What we have to remember in the Agile world is a lot of what we talk about, yes, it's about the more human elements of work and creating an environment where people want to create, innovate, be passionate. But not every company wants that. And when we're in those organisations, sometimes the person in charge wants to do something that we think is wrong, but they think is right. And they're the boss. So it's up to them. We can choose to stay or not. We can choose to work with them to help them see maybe there's a different way. But ultimately, if they're the leader in the company, it's their decision. So what we can't do is turn up thinking we're right. We've got to go to them and be humble and give them an opportunity to talk things through. The way that I would invariably do it is through something called nonviolent communication. Okay? What I want to do is not talk about what they did, but what I felt in that example. So you're going to go up to them and you're going to give them an observation. You're going to say this happened, something verifiable that they agree with. Because okay? you want them to say, yeah, that happened. And now you want to talk about what that did for you internally. That made me feel this way. I was uncomfortable. Whatever it was, you know, I think the team took it badly. Not the team took it badly because that's placing it on other people. But what happened for you? Okay. And nine times out of ten, that wasn't their intention. Okay. And we don't really need to go much further. You can have really good detailed discussions with people in very short periods of time because the awkwardness is dealt with you turned up to the sprint review and you just shouted at people okay i i felt threatened i i felt that they did a really good job and you came in and i feel that you just crushed their spirit and they turn around and genuinely they go oh that's not what i meant at all i was looking to drive them forward i was looking to create it's like okay that that's not how it came across to me and so what do we do going forwards? And we can open up a discussion with that person okay? because most people come to work to do a good job. They want to be good people. They've just got an agenda to achieve, often one that can be counter to what we want to achieve. Okay? Our role as a scrum master is to create a place for that team to excel. Okay? But we've got to remember excellence is measured by the organisation. Okay? It's delivering their outcomes, their goals, not only on the teams. 
So we've got to work with that leader. We've got to help them understand the impact to us, to our team. And indeed, if you are a representative of that team and you've talked to the team about these things, instead of saying, I felt, we felt, we've had a chat and we really felt put upon there. We really felt that we did a great job and you came in and you crushed it. And with all of our achievements, you crushed all of our, our will to step up and do it again. What I find is that's not what they want. They do want something. And maybe that is the approach they've always taken. And they may be very surprised that it didn't resonate, that it didn't work because nobody's taken the time just to sit down and talk to them, to hear what they have to say, what they're trying to achieve and feed back to them what the outcome is of their actions. So we're going to go in and we're going to talk about this is what happened. Do we both agree this thing happened? Yeah, great. This is how I felt or this is how we as a team felt. Okay. How can we work together? They as the leader, you as the scrum master. How can we work together to get a better outcome? You know, Because if you're going to turn up and do that again, don't expect a different result. So don't turn up and do that again, please. What can we do differently? Right? You're, you're trying to get them to pick up the pace. And maybe they can. I don't know. So instead of that, tell them that and tell them why. Why is it important? Open up that dialogue. Really explore the space. Your coaching skills as a scrum master will come to the fore here. You're not trying to give them an answer. Okay? You're trying to get them to create an answer that works for them and works for your team. I don't particularly believe in bad leaders. Okay? People in leadership positions are invariably smart and capable. They may be employing a skill set that is not one we would like. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Okay? This is not about best. This is about better. What we want is to work with those leaders and say, look, that may have worked for you, but it's not working for this team. Okay? And we want to deliver the outcome you want, but that, that's not going to create the outcome you want. I'm really sorry. I know you're frustrated. I know whatever it is that's causing this behavior, um, you're in a difficult bind. We want to work with you. We want to help you. Okay? But to do that, you need to work with us in a way that works for us. And over time, you may well find that that leader changes their approach because many of the things you're going to do as a scrum master are going to help them in other parts of the organization. They're going to realize that, that traditional drive, whatever the culture it is that they've come from or they're creating that isn't working or isn't working for you is likely not working for other people. Okay? And giving them that time to pause and reflect can be incredibly valuable not only for you and your team, but the wider organization and them, because their engagements, their interactions with others are now thoughtful, are now hopefully more effective. Okay? And we have this virtuous cycle starting. And it's all going to be based on the fact that you didn't react. You responded. You took time out to just say, OK, what happened? And write it down in detail. Be really clear with yourself with your team. This is what happened. This is how we feel. This is what we believe an appropriate way of approaching the same thing could be. And taking that and finding time in that leader's diary. Okay? Opening up a conversation, talking about it. What is the observation? How is that relevant to the people in this room, you and the leader, the team, even though they're not necessarily physically there? What are the consequences of that behaviour? Okay. And what actions could we, as a collective, take to create a better outcome next time? This isn't telling them they're wrong. This is just saying there's a better way forward. Okay. Please don't go into a meeting believing that that leader is a bad person or a toxic person. That is going to bias your conversation. You're going to be out to get them. I don't know how and I don't know what's going to happen, but it's unlikely to be good or successful. Instead, go in with a clear idea of what happened and how you could move forward and work with them to really uncover a solution that works for them as well as you. So don't worry about malignant leaders. I don't think they're a thing in the main. We do come, come across the occasional real problem case, but in the main part, they're trying to do a job and they're employing the tools and the skills 
that go with their experience and their personality. That didn't work for you and that could be okay, but have a conversation with them. Go talk to them, give them the feedback about how it landed and see how you can work together to get a better outcome next time. If you've got to this point in the video, I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, a like would be appreciated. If you want to hear more from me, more answers to questions that maybe you've got in the Agile world, please subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a question that you really want answered, drop it in the comments. I promise we'll get around to it. Thank you.